Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Voice. Today we are going to see opening for white that too in the Petrov's defense. We are going to learn a specific variation against the Petrov defense. Let's get started. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight F6. This is the starting position of the Petrov defense. The line which I am suggesting is a gambit line and white gets very good play for the pawn. Uh, this line can be played at uh, beginner level and also at intermediate level. Note one thing, all the lines whichever I am recommending, I have played them at some point or the other myself also. Okay, so let's see. Bishop c4. White is giving up the e4 pawn so that black has to move this knight more number of times. Let's see what happens. Knight into e4. Now, white plays knight c3. This is the main idea. Immediately after sacrificing the pawn, white is offering an exchange. See, which is not generally done. When we are down in material, we avoid exchanges. Okay? But what white notes here? That this knight has moved, see, already once, twice and now it will move thrice. Okay? And it will get exchanged for a piece which had moved only once. So what has happened? 3 minus 1, the knight which has moved once and the black knight which had moved thrice. So 2 temporary has been lost by black over here. So what white has got here? See, 2 extra development. This queen is open. Okay, this we can easily consider as half a development. And the bishop is also open. So this offers very good play for white over here. Let's try to understand what black can do here. Most of the obvious moves what we see for black here are all mistakes. So I will try to cover this whole variation in two lessons. Okay, Today we are going to look at all the moves which are natural. Let's get started. The first most obvious move, knight c6. Okay, Just doing development, immediately fails to knight g5. I think you must have already noted that f7 is the weakness here. So immediately white is trying to attack f7. Black has no good way to protect it. If queen e7, then bishop f7 check, kd8 and knight e6 is very strong. See qe7 blunder. There is no point in supporting with the bigger piece. So bf7 check, kd8 and c knight e6. The only move queen e6, otherwise it's a checkmate. So queen e6, b e6 and white wins the queen. Let's go to the next variation. So the only move to protect f7 is the move d5. Okay, so immediately black has to return the pawn in order to defend f7. So now white plays bishop d5. Still there is no defense to the f7 pawn other than the move bishop e6. This is the only way to avoid the loss of f7 pawn and that too with a check maybe. Okay, so now comes bishop into e6. Black has to exchange the queens in order to break white's castle. Qd1, Kd1 f6 and after the move knight e6 we see that white has become a pawn up and this is a easily winning position perhaps the only move is kd8 7 try to force the knight to go away after kd7 the knight will move black will try to have some extra development which is very temporary right now see development is equal here white has many ways white can play knight g5 but according to me white should just exchange knight f8 rook f8 and bishop e3, developing the bishop by supporting the f2 pawn. And after ke2, king is totally safe in the endgame on e2. And he can double the rooks on the d5 and try to trade the rooks. That will give him a winning position. Okay, but many people will say knight f8 is a bad exchange because we are exchanging a good knight for the bishop which was inside. But white is exchanging here so that the knight on e6 is not wasting any moves. So after b3, this is actually winning for white king. Another move which is very obvious for black here is the move d6. He tries to save the pawn okay, and at the same time he wants to continue the development of c8 bishop okay, and he may think that he can play this bishop to e7 and castle. So that will stop ng5 and all. Here white has many ways. One simple way could be ng5. Attacking the f7 pawn and winning back the pawn after the move b6 which will give him good position. But here white has a very nice combination. See the queen is on the semi-open file now. 
why its activity is 1 2 already developed pieces the queen on d1 is half open as i told you so white has a combination here white has the strong move knight e5 okay and after knight e5 if black takes d5 then there is very strong move again bishop f7 check now if king takes f7 then the queen on d8 is lost so the only move king e7 but after ke7 even worse bg5 check and after king takes f7 queen into d8 and the white position is totally winning over there okay so let's go back and see if black can try something else so after knight e5 black can play the move queen e7 this i had analyzed once when i used to play the line okay i was not knowing really what to do over here but i saw a nice calculation at that time white can of course play the move bishop f7 king goes to d8 and for very long time i thought that black white can play the move bishop f4 when the knight cannot be taken but bishop f4 is not best because black has nd7 and the e5 knight will be lost but we can see one thing that white's development already is more than black's castle is broken activity is really hmm, great for white white has a very strong move castle hmm. and i would like to share my analysis with you after the move queen e5 if queen doesn't take e5 then we can just play rook e1 and protect the knight okay so queen takes e5 rook e1 exploiting the weakness on the e8 square now the queen has to try to be near to the f6 or this whole diagonal because bishop g5 check will be very dangerous so queen comes to f6 and now white has a forced win a line which is totally forced let's see rook e8 check ad7 qg4 check kc6 and here many think that after qc8 white is actually winning qc8 qf7 and see all black pieces are stuck white is a piece down but black pieces are all stuck inside but white has a forced combination it's like a king hunt chapter which we have done before the move bd5 check very strong forcing the king to come in the middle and then he will push it back so now let's look at the variations if kb6 then qb4 check king a6 bc4 b5 qb5 wait let's do it quickly kb6 qb4 king a6 bc4 b5 and then qb5 check knights so after bd5 king c5 will also transpose after qc4 check so king takes d5 forced queen e4 check this was the point of bd5 so that the king cannot go back to b6 so king c5 now bishop e3 check now king doesn't have the square on b6 only move kb5 and now the simple move a4 check now king has two pluses to both of which he gets mated if ka5 then qb4 check king a6 qb5 checkmates and if king a6 then also qc4 check b5 then qb5 mate king a5 then also qb5 mate and this is how black gets mated after the move queen e7 especially if he takes the knight then it is a forced mate otherwise the position is winning for white let's look at one more line I has two other moves over here which are also bad okay one is bishop c5 after bishop c5 if we recollect the game which we did before the missing knight on f6 so what we see white has a very strong way knight g5 now if castles then immediately white wins the same way after the move queen h5 and now see there is no defense to the pawn on h7 forced to play h6 and after knight f7 white wins the game very easily you can see the analysis of that chapter i will show you some moves quickly h6 knight takes f7 rook takes f7 queen takes f7 king goes to h8 and now there is a very dangerous move bishop g5 which wins on the spot if queen takes g5 then qg8 mates and if h takes g5 then queen h5 mates or the greco's mate the king cannot go to the g8 square okay let's look at the next variation so black has another inferior but still i would say decent move that is b7 
it stops the move in g5 but returns the pawn immediately and white gets some initiative so after knight e5 see f7 is attacked now after castle white has two good moves one is queen f3 simply attacking the f7 pawn and stopping the move d5 so after queen f3 white has black has to play queen e8 the only way to save the f7 pawn and then after castle white's position is very nice all active pieces and he has got the pawn back and then after developing the bishop to f4 or g5 rooks will come to e1 and d1 that will be a very good position for white but if white wants to play more aggressively he can consider the move queen h5 even there also there is queen e8 after d5 we can do bd3 transferring our attack on the king side on h7 forcing the pawns to move okay so after queen e8 here also white will castle and same idea after castle he will try to develop the bishop to f4 get the rook to e1 and try to use the pin on the e5 this is a very pleasant position for white let's look at some lines uh, what black can try over here other than queen e8 so other than queen e8 he can do g6 okay but after g6 black loses by force now comes knight into g6 h into g6 queen g6 check he got already two pawns for the piece king goes to h8 forced now see queen h5 check bf7 was also interesting but this is stronger king has to go to g8 and now very simple and effective bishop h6 and now what we see the threat is qg4 check and waiting on g7 so only move d5 attacking the bishop and stopping qg4 but here white has the very strong move long castle after which the rook will transfer from d3 to g3 and d5 is also attacked so we can easily say that this position is winning for white already the black king is open two pawns for piece is hardly any sacrifice we can say and the activity wise the position is already winning for white so this was all about this gambit there is only one line which is left for black that is the main line which we will cover in the next lesson so i hope you are you are enjoying the channel do like share and subscribe the channel thanks for your time